Hello there and welcome to this Carrying Case album tutorial. I found this project on Alagena's YouTube channel and she has graciously given me permission to share my version of her project with you. I'm Mary Jane and you can find my other videos on my MJ Mistral channel. The minute I saw Alagena's album I just fell in love with it and I thought it would be a perfect uh, album for an upcoming christening that we have in our family. So First, let's just take a look at the video of a video of the finished project. There, you've had a look of it all around. There's an outside pocket. I've got little cards in here. Closed with a magnet, a buckle to open the main case, and when you lift it up, you have pouches. There are five of them all together, and there are little cards in each pouch, which can be used for photos, for example. I've just used playing card stock and haven't decorated them since I want to be able to use it for gosh knows how, in fact. That's my husband making noise behind me. <laughs> there, we are also have two inside pockets. This one also has cards with card stock, which I have decorated a little bit this time. Closed with a little arrow that turns on a brad. On the other side, I've made a little, we'll call it a signature book, I suppose, in which the guests are going to be able to write a little note for the baby. And there, I think I've put 10 or 12 pages in there all together. That, I haven't showed you how to do that in the tutorial, as a matter of fact. Um, I just used a, my binder that I have. It's closed with an arrow as well. And we'll just close up the buckle. And there you go. That's what it looks like finished. Here is a list of the papers and the glue that I use, or the adhesives, and here is a list of the rest of the supplies that I needed. Uh, let me tell you, my scrap room was a real mess while I was doing this. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is cut the cardboard. There are five main pieces, all of them are 20 centimeters wide. The front and back are 14 centimeters high. The base and the top of the album are four and a half centimeters wide. The piece for the front flap is eight and a half centimeters wide but we're going to recut that right away look we're just going to take that front piece and recut it and you're going to do it exactly as i've shown you here with a, a knife okay you're going to cut out a little a little rectangle that measures 12 by four and a half now after cutting the cardboard the next step is going to be covering all the pieces with craft paper. So cut your craft so that you have a two centimeter uh, border or extra um, all around to fold up. Before I apply it, I'm putting a double, um, a piece of adhesive, double faced adhesive in the middle of the cardboard just so that it stays in place as I fold the edges up. I'm using a bone folder first. I'm just to mark all the fold lines and that will give me a nice crisp edge uh, when I when I glue the, the craft paper up. So I'm showing you just what I mean there. Okay. I'm just using my bone folder to crisp up the edges a little bit. Now I'm going to put double-sided tape around all the edges, but not too far into the corners. 
I would have used one and a half or two centimeter double-sided tape, but mine was a narrower, mine was a little bit narrower, and that's why there are two rows of it here. So I'm going to fold up my first edge. I'm just take off the backing of my tape and fold up the first edge. And do remember to run the bone folder along the edges to make them cream, clean and, and crisp huh, as you're doing this. And then you're going to do the opposite edge. Now I'm going to show you with a video how I manage the corners. So I'm just going to fold it up a little bit into a little triangular form, if you will. You'll see it on the other side there. Okay, I'm folding in at about 45 degrees and that gives me a little bit of a triangle that I'm going to cut out in just a second. I'm just going to grab my scissors and cut out that excess paper. It's just going to add a thickness where I don't want it. Once that's done, I'm going to take the adhesive or the backing off the adhesive, if I can get it. Push the corners back in nice and flat and then fold the craft paper up and again use the bone folder to make a nice crisp edge. front flap is a little bit trickier so we're going to start with a double-sided tape to hold the cardboard in place you're going to leave your two centimeters of craft around all the edges of course and you'll see too that I've put some double-sided tape on the scrap piece that I'm going to use in just a minute with your scissors cut into the corner at a 45 degree angle and now with that little bit of scrap, you're going to camouflage the corner of the front flap as I'm showing you. You're going to have to cut down from the top of the corner piece to the cardboard to be able to flatten it out as I'm showing you here. Um, that's what you want to get. And you'll notice that I do still have a white square there that I'm going to want to cover up. I just don't want to see any white at all. So I've just cut out another little bit of craft that I'm going to glue into that corner so I've got no white showing whatsoever. And now before I move along, I'm going to burnish all the edges of my craft covered cardboard. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to make the hinges for the carrying case. So cut four rectangles that are 19 and a half by four centimeters. You're going to trim a little V off um, both ends of all four hinges as I'm showing you. And now let's watch the video that shows the binding process. So I'm using my gel glue which I love, putting the glue on one side of the hinge, placing it under, lining it up as best I can, of course it moves around. Putting the glue on the other side. taking the next panel and putting it into place. Now you'll see that I'm going to use a piece of my cardboard for making sure that I have the, the same distance all along the edges uh, between, between the two panels. Yeah, I'm just straightening it out a bit. I wasn't happy. It's not straight. <laughs> having a hard time, aren't I? Yeah. The glue is getting a bit tackier now so that it's easier. Yeah, once I've got it going, I'm just going to put my cardboard, the scrap, into place, squeeze the two pieces together, make sure they're lined up on the top and on the bottom. It's like Santa Claus. I'm making my list and checking it twice, checking it over and over again to make sure that it's as straight as possible. There. So now I've got two pieces of, of the carrying case that are put together. Mm -hmm. 
and so you're going to assemble your album as so. I've indicated the top of the front and the bottom of the back, just so that uh, we know roughly where we're going here. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is cut and adhere the black underpapers to the outside of the carrying case onto the craft covered side. Okay, these underpapers are half a centimeter smaller than the carrying case itself. So once they're cut, you can glue them into place. And then we're going to do the same thing with the printed papers. These printed papers are yet half a centimeter smaller again than the black underpapers, so one centimeter smaller than the carrying case blocks. I've indicated the front and back bottom so that you don't put your papers on upside down. Don't forget to burnish the edges and then you can glue them into place. Okay, so now let's move along and do the handle. Cut a strip for the handle. I used uh, full leather, 20 by two centimeters. I pierced the leather at one and two and a half centimeters from the edges, uh, from the ends. Um, I also rounded the corners. I just did it freehand with a pair of scissors as a punch would get stuck. And for accuracy, you can see that I made myself a template so that both ends would be identical. And then next with a hammer and an owl, all. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to pronounce that. I hold the top or I made holes in the top of the case four and 2.5 centimeters in from the edge. And then once the handle is put into place with brads, this is what it looks like. Now I'm going to leave you to follow these instructions to put the buckle into place on the front right hand side of the case. So you're going to cut a leather strip that's six and a half by one. You're going to fold it around the buckle at four and a half centimeters. Place the brad at 1.2 centimeters up from the bottom of the uh, printed paper. And you're going to do the same for the top of the of the flap, the right part of the flap. You're going to cut a leather strip that's seven by one centimeters. It's held uh, in place with glue under my um, R square. Plus I put a brad in one centimeter up from the bottom edge of the front flap. And there's a picture of the closed buckle. Now then, let's tackle the inside. The first you're going to do is cut the black papers as shown. The missing piece, the piece that's missing there that's still craft colored, will be looked after in just a minute. That's where the hinges are going to go for the inside pouches. Now, once you've got all of those glued into place, all of your pieces are glued into place as so, we're going to cut the hinges. You're going to cut a piece of black paper that's 19 and a half by 19 and a half centimeters. And then you're going to make a series of mountain and valley folds as I've indicated. To make it easier, I've made you a list of the score lines to trace. So you start on one side, you score in at two and a half centimeters, then at 3.75 centimeters, then at five centimeters and so on, all the way along your paper. You're going to put um, double-sided tape in the five of the 1.25 centimeter spaces. Then you're going to take the backing off the tape and close them as so. This is a top view of the hinge piece. And this is the bottom view. You can adhere this hinge, uh, this hinge piece to the bottom panel of the carrying case. And then the next thing you're going to do is cut the end of each hinge off at 45 degrees as I've shown you here. There. So that's the hinge piece done as well. Now we're going to move on to the pouches that go on these hinges. We're going to do five of them. So you're going to need to cut 10 pieces of black paper that measure 21 by 13 and a half centimeters. You're going to score in uh, at uh, 19 and a half centimeters. And we're now going to use the envelope punch board to punch the pouches. You're going to line the, uh, line the edge up in the middle of the punch area as I've shown you here. And you'll see um, that I'm using, oh, I know I don't have it on this tape. Forget it. I didn't say a thing there. You're going to punch all the corners, all the top corners of the 10 pieces. Okay. And then trim the inside of the tab, the tab, as I've shown you here. Next, you're going to line the upper edge of the pouch at the six centimeter mark on the envelope punch board. And punch, of course. You're going to flip the punch over, or 
pardon me, you're going to flip the pouch over and do the same thing to the other side. All right, that's what it looks like now. Now what you're going to do is take a straight edge and a knife to cut out the middle part so that you have this. So repeat that for the other four pouches. And now you can adhere the front to the back to form the five pouches. To decorate the front of them, cut your printed paper, make sure that you know which side is up and which side is down, and then you're going to use the uh, envelope punch board to punch your corners. And you're going to create the notches in the same way as you did on the pouches, lining the edge of the printed paper up at 5.5 centimeters on the envelope punch board. There, that's what I started to say earlier. I'm just using EPB as an abbreviation for envelope punch board. Don't forget to burnish your edges. Now you can put the um, double face tape on all sides or both sides of all five hinges and remove the backing and place the pouches over the hinges. Okay. Use your bone folder to make sure that you've got, got them stuck down really well. Now for the inside of these pouches, you're going to cut five pieces of cardstock. I've given you the dimensions here. You're going to use the envelope punch board again. This time though, we're going to discard the outer edges of the cardstock and keep the tab in the middle. Now you're going to cut off the outer edges with your knife uh, and your ruler. So that's what it looked like. Remember to do the corner punch. And once it's placed inside the pouch, that's what it looks like. I've just used the scraps from the other uh, pages other, to decorate. Okay, now we're going to do the create. We're going to create the pocket on the outside of the carrying case. I've cut a piece of black paper, 12 by 10. Uh, oh, I've written that in French. Sorry, 12 is the width and 10 is the height. You're going to score laterally, both sides, at 1.5, 1.8, and 2.5 centimeters, and you're going to score vertically, 1.8 and 2.5 up from the bottom edge. You're going to cut out the bottom corners, as I've shown you here, and you're going to accordion fold on the fold lines. Put a piece of double-sided tape on the outer edges of the bottom tab, like this, and then adhere the bottom tab to the side tabs. For the flap of this outside pocket, you're going to cut the paper, as indicated, 7.5 wide by 6 high, you're going to score at 2.25 and at 2.85 and trim a little bit back, a little bit off the, um, the back side of the top flap, as I've shown you here, and use the envelope corner to do the corners of the front of this top flap. And then you can adhere that to the, the pouch or the pocket. And I've decorated it. Uh, I've given you the dimensions for the papers that I've used. Of course, you can do it however you like. There, once it's glued into place, we can move along to the inside pockets. There are two of them. Here are the dimensions of the paper. You can um, use two sheets of black A4 paper and cut them as I've shown you here. You're going to score laterally at 1.5, 1.8 and 2.5. And then you're going to score up from the bottom at 1.8 and 2.5. Using the same technique as previously, you're going to create the shape along the top of the pocket. You're going to punch in using the six centimeter mark on your envelope punch board. You're going to do the same for the decorate uh, the decorated paper that's going to go onto the front of the punch. Okay, punch at five and a half on a piece of paper that measures 19 by 10. You're going to create a flap for these two inside pockets. Okay, you're going to need two pieces. Uh, you've got them cut out already. Here I've given you the score lines. Don't forget to punch the bottom corners. And there's the printed paper that's going to decorate the top flaps. Now for closing these two little pockets, I didn't have a closure that suited me, so I used an, an arrow that I cut out from one of my papers, glued it to some cardboard, cut it out, and then placed it in, put it in place with a brad uh, to the pocket. 
Now I've got my, uh, my pocket all folded up. I use the same technique as I use for the outside pocket using an accordion fold on the sides and a simple fold on the bottom. And then once I glue it in place, and so I, I adhere it, adhere it, I use my bone folder to run along the inside um, edges just to make sure that it's really well stuck down, uh, really well uh, stuck into place. And with my decorated papers, I'm going to um, add little bits of color to all of the panels uh, that are remaining. And once that's finished, your carrying case is finished. I hope you like this project as much as I did.